no issues okay yes ma'am yeah okay a very good morning to everyone myself sarita yadav welcome you all to online education held by B uh, bmc education department student today we are going to cover the topic animal classification of science 2 okay now students you have already studied about classification in lower classes exactly what which criteria are used for classification of organism uh hello excuse me ma'am yes ma'am is slide changing yeah yeah okay okay yes okay so which criteria are used for the classification of organisms now students we have studied about this in lower classes it was uh, various criterias like on the basis of basic characteristics such as presence or absence of nucleus okay and on the basis of this organisms were classified as prokaryotic and eukaryotic okay so that was the first criteria now see the second criteria was the cell structure or cell occurrence that means unicellular body or multicellular body and the third criteria which was considered was presence and absence of cell wall this you have studied uh, presence and absence of cell wall that is we are going to talk about plant cell and animal cell and the fourth criteria was the mode of nutrition whether the plant is uh, whether the organism is autotrophs or heterotrophs so on the basis of mode of nutrition the organisms were classified so this were the few criterias which were considered while doing the classification of organisms okay now when we say presence or absence of nucleus on the basis of that uh, it uh, organisms were classified as prokaryotic and eukaryotic what exactly is the meaning of prokaryotes and eukaryotes now students see prokaryote means it is the organisms in which a cell in which true nucleus is absent okay so nucleus true nucleus is not present in those cells membrane bound organelles are absent you know in cells various organelles are there okay and they have membrane around them so the such organelles where which have membranes they are absent in prokaryotes such organisms prokaryotes they are unicellular unicellular means they are made up of one cell and that one cell is carrying out all the life process for those organism see the examples bacteria archaea okay these are the few examples of prokaryotes the other one eukaryotes what is the difference okay now see in eukaryote true nucleus is present you can see in the picture also in the picture eukaryotic cell true nucleus is present okay then membrane bound organelles such as mitochondria and other organs organelles are present these organisms may be unicellular or multicellular multicellular means the the organism is made up of many cells and many cells are responsible to carry out different life process examples plants animals human being we are all included in eukaryotes okay so this was the basic difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes see the second one unicellular or multicellular body means what unicellular body means it is made up of single cell you can take example of amoeba okay protozoa multicellular body means 
multiple cells are there and these multiple cells are in clusters to form specialized tissues and organs which are responsible for various life process in that organism okay then presence or absence of cell wall you have already studied plant cell and animal cell both one mode of nutrition autotrophs okay on the basis of this we have studied about autotrophs and heterotrophs what is autotroph autotrophs are the plants which can make their own food with the help of photosynthesis such organisms or such plants such plants oh they are called as autotrophs what are heterotrophs they depend on some other plant or some organ other organisms they cannot prepare their own food okay so they are they were included in heterotrophs so these are the few criterias which was considered while doing the classification of organism now you know in our environment in our nature there are variety of plants and animals in our surrounding okay and all these plants and animals they are classified on the basis of their characteristics characteristics means features okay special features present in them one of the scientists one of the earlier days one of the first scientists who did the classification of living organism was robert whitaker and he proposed five kingdom system of classification of living organism this you have studied last year okay now according to whitaker which was the five kingdoms the five kingdoms were monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so what he did on the basis of the characteristics he classified different organisms into this five kingdoms namely monera protista fungi plantae and animalia now this is how the robert whitaker's five kingdom classification looks okay now let us quickly go through this chart the robert whitaker okay he classified living organisms into prokaryotic and eukaryotic we have already seen the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic okay so in prokaryotic he included the kingdom monera okay then eukaryotic further it was classified into unicellular and multicellular depending upon the cells and in unicellular he included the kingdom protista then multicellular was further classified on the basis of cell wall okay so if the cell wall is present that is plant cell if the cell wall is absent you know cell wall is absent in animal cells so cell wall present further the organisms were classified on the basis of nutrition as autotrophic and heterotrophic and you know autotrophic plants prepare their own food so kingdom plant was included in autotrophs heterotrophic these are the plants which cannot prepare their own food so kingdom fungi as fungi depends upon dead and decaying matter okay so fungi is included in heterotrophic and the other one was animal kingdom as cell wall is absent animal kingdom is included in this so this is how the robert whitaker's five kingdom classification was done okay now let us see the characteristics of each kingdom now see first kingdom monera these are the cell, these are the organisms which are prokaryotic they are unicellular they can they may be autotrophs or heterotrophs okay some have cell wall some doesn't so this bacteria okay so bacteria are included in kingdom monera the other one was second kingdom was protista kingdom protista now in this 
the organisms are eukaryotic okay they are unicellular they may be autotrophs or heterotrophs okay and their movement is with the help of cilia flagella and pseudopodia okay and amoeba is an example in the kingdom protista kingdom fungi see the next kingdom they are eukaryotic mostly multicellular they are heterotrophs okay saprophytic in nature their cell wall is made up of chitin and some form symbiotic association with blue green algae okay so fungi forms an symbiotic association with blue green algae where they help out each other okay one is providing the nutrition the other is providing the protection so that is called symbiotic association next kingdom was plantae plants are eukaryotic they are multicellular they are autotrophs they can prepare their own food with the help of the process called photosynthesis and the cell wall of plant is made up of cellulose and the last kingdom was animalia okay the organisms are eukaryotic they are multicellular they are heterotrophs they cannot prepare their own food they depend upon others either plants or animal and cell wall is absent so this were the five kingdom classification and their characteristics an example given by robert whitaker now students in last year 9th standard you have studied about plant classification isn't it you know uh, uh, in our surrounding there is lot of diversity even in plant kingdom so based on that let us quickly revise the plant classification before going to animal classification okay now plant kingdom is divided into two subdivisions uh, two divisions that is cryptogamy and phanerogamy what are cryptogamy they are the non flowering ones okay non flowering plants and phanerogamy they are the flowering plants now cryptogamy is further divided into three that is thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta to see the characteristics now thallophyta this is the called this are called this uh, plants okay which are included in thallophyta they are commonly called as algae this plant body of uh, this the plant is not differentiated into root stems and leaves and mostly the plants are aquatic the plants in this group is aquatic okay that means they grow mainly in water they do not have specific parts like root stems leaves flowers but they are autotrophic autotrophic due to presence of chlorophyll and they are commonly called as algae see the examples spirogyra ulothrix ulva sargassum these are the examples of plants included in thallophyta see the next one bryophyta division bryophyta now bryophyta if you know this group of plant they are called as amphibians of plant kingdom why because they grow in moist soil also and they need water also for reproduction if you see the plants okay they are thalloid multicellular and autotrophic their body is differentiated into stem like leaf like root like structures that means no true stem leaf and root are present but stem like leaf like root like structures are present okay they do not have specific tissues for conduction of food and water that they, they are absent and such plants are terrestrial that means they grow on land soil in moist soil but they require water for production uh, reproduction example c rishia okay moss marchantia anthoceros these are the example of bryophyta 
The next division is Pteridophyta. Now, Pteridophyta, this plants of this group, they have well developed root, stem, and leaves. And they have specialized tissues also to conduct water. For reproduction, they have spores. Okay, so they reproduce with the help of spores. See the examples. Example is Marsalia, Teres, Neprolephis. These are the ferns, okay, which is included in Pteridophyta. So cryptogamy was divided into three divisions. That is Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. Similarly, the Phanerogamy, the flowering plants, okay, they have special structures for reproduction. They produce seeds also. Such plant, these plants, phanerogams, it was divided into gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm and angiosperm. Let us see what is what are the features of gymnosperm. Okay, the main features are in gymnosperm, naked seeds are present. Naked seeds that means no fruit formation. Okay. Such plants are perennial, evergreen, and woody plants. And their reproductive organ is cone strobilis. Examples, cycus, picia, pinus. Okay, pinus also called as deodor. So gymnosperm, these are the characteristics of gymnosperm. The other one, the other division is angiosperm. Angiosperms are the flowering plants. Seed is inside the fruit. Okay, so that is the basic difference between gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm, naked seeds. And in angiosperm, seed is inside the fruit. Such plant is, the, the plants of this groups, they may be annual, biennial or perennial. Okay, and in this plants, double fertilization occurs. Examples, you can see mustard, Okay, all the main um, bigger plants are included in this angiosperm, all the flowering ones. Now further, angiosperm is divided into two groups, that is monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous. Now this differentiation was based on the basis of cotyledon. Okay, in monocotyledonous, single cotyledon is present. You can see in the picture, okay, single cotyledon is present. Whereas in dicot, you can see, you can see two cotyledons are present. In the picture, you can clearly see the two cotyledons. So this is how the plant classification was done and we have studied already about it, okay? But what about animals? As the lesson name is animal classification. Okay. How the animal classification was done? Why there was need for animal classification? Is there any benefit of doing the animal classification? We are going to study about it. Okay. Now, student, you know, there is a lot of variety of animals around us. Isn't it? Lot of diversity in the animal kingdom approximately okay it is estimated according to recent studies the estimated number of animal species on earth is approximately 7 millions okay 7 millions of animal species on earth are estimated that is an approximation it can be more also now even in this animal so many uh, in this animals you can see a lot of diversity, okay, on the basis of different criterias. Now, when we see different criterias, see the first criteria size. Some animals are small, some animals are big, okay. You already no need to give examples. Small animals, there are different insects, rodents, and all. Bigger animals, elephant, giraffe, hippopotamus, rhinoceros, various animals, okay. So, many bigger animals are there. So again, there is a lot of variety on the basis of size. Second, see some are terrestrial, whereas some are aquatic. That is on the basis of habitat. Some animals are found on land. Some animals are 
found in water some are found in desert region some are found in snowy regions isn't it so there is lot of variety seen over this also now next one some animals crawl on land some swim in water some fly in air again lot of variety okay so what happens over here some animals crawl on this is this differentiation is on the basis of locomotion isn't it some are crawling on land that means they are reptiles some are swimming fishes some are flying we are talking about birds so again lot of variety next one see some have scales on skin okay some have feathers that is birds some have hair furs on their body okay example see lion so again lot of diversity seen in animal kingdom based on different characteristics okay so when there is so much diversity it is impossible to study each and every species isn't it it becomes now just imagine to study about 7 million species of animal is it a easy task no okay it becomes very impossible to study each and every species so what needs to be done systematic classification okay and it is this systematic classification which makes it easy for us to study the diverse animal forms which are present around us got it so that's why systematic classification is um is very much required now see so what is animal classification okay it is formation of groups and subgroups of animals depending upon similarities and differences among animals is called animal classification okay so what is animal classification different groups and subgroups were made and the animals were studied on the basis of their characteristics so on the basis of similar and difference different characteristic they were classified or they were put into different groups and subgroups and this is called as animal classification now see when animal classification was done is there any benefit definitely okay now what are the benefits now see study of animals become convenient now see when students when you have a lot of books and when just you store it together so it becomes e it becomes difficult for you to find any one isn't it but if you have arranged it in a proper way so it becomes easier for you to take out a specific book and study similarly when animals were classified into different groups and subgroups the study of the animals became convenient easier okay second one see by studying few animals from each group understanding the entire groups become easy now suppose if there are four five animals in a group okay you have studied about one animal and you know all the animals have similar features what are the differences in them so it becomes easier for you to understand just by studying one animal you can get an idea about the other animal also okay so understanding about the entire group becomes easy third one it gives better idea about animal evolution now you have already studied about evolution isn't it over a uh, over a course of time period okay i'm not talking about one year two years i'm talking about centuries okay over a course of period animals have evolved in order to adapt or in order to survive so this evolution okay evolution can be understood properly or in a better way with the help of animal classification animals can be easily identified with great accuracy because of animal classification identification became easier and more accurate 
the mistakes were minimized okay next one the relationship of animals with other living organism is better understood you know in our surrounding the plants and animals they are dependent upon each other they affect each other so their relationship can be better studied with the help of animal classification next point it helps to understand it helps to understand the habitat of each animal and its exact role in nature now you know in different habitats different animals are found okay and this animals just not only they are the part of that system okay ecosystem they play a very important role also affecting the nature so even that can be studied very well with the help of animal classification it helps to understand various adaptation shown by animals see already in the previous slide we studied some some animals have scales some have feathers some have fur isn't it some have long neck some have wings so various adaptations are seen in animals in order to survive in that particular environment so that various adaptations can be understood with the help of animal classification so these are the few benefits of animal classification okay students this question can be asked describe the benefits or this uh, explain the benefits of animal classification so this seven points very easy very easily you can write the answer see the next one history of animal classification now over the course of time time to time okay different scientists have tried to classify the animals now one of the first scientists greek philosopher aristotle was the first to perform the animal classification now when he was doing the classification he considered different criteria like body size habits and habitat and on the basis of this criteria he did the classification the classification proposed by aristotle is known as artificial method okay now besides aristotle other scientists many other scientists they of uh, they also put forward this artificial method of classification okay who were this theophrastus pliny john ray linnaeus okay these are the various scientists who uh, who also did the artificial method of classification based on different criteria okay further later on after the artificial method natural system of classification was followed and this natural system of classification on was based on what criteria like body organization types of cells chromosomes bio uh, biochemical properties so this were the criteria considered and who put forward this was the natural system of classification was brought into practice and it was used by dobzhansky and mayer and then recently okay another scientist carl wuis he also proposed the animal classification which is called as traditional method okay traditional method and this traditional method of animal classification is based on the criteria of presence or absence of notochord okay so this uh, this this is a slight history of animal classification no need to study no need to by heart you just have to know the different methods now let us discuss about traditional method of animal classification so as i said traditional method of animal classification was based on what criteria it was based upon presence or absence of notochord okay this criteria was used for doing the animal classification and based on this characteristic presence or absence of notochord animal kingdom was divided into two groups 
Okay, so two groups, and what were the two groups? Non-chordates and chordates. Got it? So you have to remember traditional method. Animal kingdom was divided into two groups, namely non-chordates and chordates. Now, when we say depending upon presence or absence of notochord, what exactly is notochord? Okay. So definition. See the definition. It can be asked. Very important one mark question. What is notochord? Okay. Notochord is a long rod-like supporting structure present on dorsal side of animal body. Okay. It keeps the nerve tissue isolated from the remaining body. Okay. So that is the definition of notochord. Very important. It is a long, long rod-like supporting structure. Present on dorsal side of animal body. Okay, when I say dorsal side, what is the meaning? Okay, see the picture. You can understand what is dorsal side. Dorsal side is this one. It is near the back or the upper side of an animal. Okay, now these are the few terms you are again and again going to come. Uh, you are going to learn in the in ahead in this lesson. So you have to understand the meaning. Okay, dorsal is the near the back. Or the upper side of the animal, ventral it is to the front or the lower side of the organism. Anterior it is the situated before or towards the front, okay, near or toward the head. Posterior it is situated at the back of something. Got it? So understand the meaning of dorsal, ventral, anterior, and posterior. Because further, when we study about different phylums, you are going to learn about these terms, okay, as the characteristics. So you should know the meaning. Now, see. Let us see about in detail about in about non-chordates. Now, when we talk about non-chordates, okay, what are the characters? See, body is not supported by rod-like notochord. As I said, notochord is absent. Pharyngeal gill slits are absent. Okay. Now, what are pharyngeal gill slits? They are the filter feeding feeding organs. They are the opening. Okay, present in an organism between throat and outside, which is responsible for filtration and respiration process. So, pharyngeal gill slits are absent. Nerve cord, if present, it is on ventral side. See, as I said, ventral side. So, you should know the meaning. What is ventral side? It is front or lower side of an organism. Got it? Heart, if present, it is on dorsal side. Okay. So heart, if present, where it is on dorsal side. Dorsal side is back or upper sides. Now further, these non-chordates. Okay. They are divided into ten phylums. Now this name is very important. Okay. Those phylums are protozoa, porifera. Silenterata, Onidaria, Platyhelminthes, Astelminthes, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Hemichordata. So these are the ten phylums of non-chordates. Okay. Similarly, let us see the characteristics of chordates. The characteristics of chordates are as follow. First one. Body is supported by notochord. That means notochord is present. Pharyngeal gill slits or lungs are present for respiration. Nerve cord is present on dorsal side of body. It is hollow. Okay, so nerve cord is present on dorsal side. Dorsal is what back or upper side. Heart is present on ventral side. Ventral means. Front or lower side of an organism. Now, what happened then? The, all the chordates animal they are grouped together in in a single phylum. And what was the name of the phylum? Phylum Chordata. This phylum has been divided into three sub phylums. Okay, namely, Eurochordata, Cephalochordata, and Vertebrata. Further, see what happens. Out of these three, Eurochordata, Cephalochordata, and Vertebrata, the subphylum Vertebrata it is divided into six classes. What are the names? 
Cyclosomata, Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Ace, Mammalia. Okay, so let us see the difference between non chordates and chordates. Then we will go on the concept map or concept table of Kingdom Animalia. So these are the few differences between non chordates and chordates, which can be asked as a very important question distinguish between non chordates and chordates. Now, see, non chordates are less evolved animals and are on the lower levels of evolution. Chordates, they are more evolved animals and are, are on the higher level of evolution. Non chordates, second point, non chordates do not have notochord. Chordates, they have notochord at least in some stage of development. In non chordates, there are no pharyngeal gill slits. In chordates, pharyngeal gill slits are present. Fourth point, no cord if present is double and paired. Double means paired, okay, and solid. Whereas in chordates, no cord is single and hollow. Fifth point, no cord is located on ventral side of body. Whereas in chordates, it is located on dorsal side of body. And see the last point, heart. If present, it is on dorsal side in non chordates. Okay. And in chordates, it is present in, on the ventral side. So, this was the few differences between non chordates and chordates. Now, students, as we discuss about non chordates and chordates and different phylums, see how the traditional or conventional system of animal classification map, concept map looks. Okay. Let us quickly go through it. Kingdom Animalia divided into two sub kingdoms, non chordates and chordates. Okay, then non chordates is further classified into phylums. And how many phylums? 10 phylums. And you have to remember the name Protozoa, Porifera, Nidaria, Platyhelminthes, Ascalminthes, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. Echinodermata and Hemichordata. So this is how non-chordate was classified into 10 phylums. Okay. See the chordates. Chordate was classified into single phylum called chordata. Okay. They have notochord. Phylum chordata is divided into subphylums. How many subphylums? Three. Urochordata, cephalochordata and vertebrata. Now, this uh, subphylum vertebrata is further classified into classes. And how many classes? Six. Okay. Namely, Cyclostomata, Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. Okay. This map is very important. It can be asked for two or four marks question. Okay. There might be some blank spaces which you have to complete. So you have to go through this concept map very thoroughly. Okay, this is the same map. Now see, this system of animal, animal classification was in practice. See, that's why the name conventional system of animal classification. Okay, but however, nowadays, new system of classification is followed. And at present, according to five kingdom classification system of Robert Whittaker, all multicellular animals are included in kingdom animalia. This new system of classification, okay, is based on criteria like what? Body organization, body symmetry, body cavity, germinal layers, segmentation, etc. Okay, so these were the new criteria which was considered while doing the animal classification. Now, students, we are going to study each criteria. Now, body organization, body symmetry, body cavity, germinal layers, segmentation. No need to by heart as it is omitted from the portion. But as these are the different characteristics of different phylums, you need to know the meaning. Okay, when we say body cavity and different types, you should know the meaning. That's why 
we are going to study about it okay so let us so what were the criteria for new system of classification five criteria first one grades of organization body symmetry germ germs layer germ layers okay body cavity and body segmentation let us quickly go through the first two criteria in today's session now when we say grades of organization now you know body of organize uh, body of organism is made up of cells isn't it and in multicellular animals in case of multicellular animals many cells are performing different functions in their body whereas in unicellular animals it is only the single cell which is perform which is performing all the functions so based on this different grades of organization was considered now see the first one protoplasmic grade organization that means what the body is made up of only protoplasm okay and it is in case example is unicellular animals got it second one see cellular grade organization now what happens in cellular grade organization many cells are present okay but they are not forming the tissues got it many cells are present and their example is porifera got it next one is cell tissue grade cell tissue grade organization now what happens cells performing similar function form the tissues and then tissues perform all body functions and what is the which example see nidaria phylum nidaria is included in cell tissue grade next one is tissue organ grade organization tissues are organized to form some organs okay but organ system is not formed example flat worms and last one organ system grade organization in this what happens different organ from different organ systems perform specific function in the body now when we talk about organ system grade human beings and all other higher animals are included in this okay so on the basis of cells this were the five different types of organization this was the first criteria see the next criteria is body symmetry now body symmetry now see when uh, you can see in the pictures now it is of three types okay radial symmetry asymmetrical and bilateral what is the meaning now see first asymmetrical no symmetry irregular shape body okay what happens in case of such organisms body there is no any such imaginary axis of the body through which we can get two equal half we do not get which is the example amoeba paramecium sponges this are the example of asymmetrical other one is radial symmetry now what happens in this type of body imaginary cut passes through central canal okay you can see the various lines imaginary axis passing through the central line central axis but any plane of the body it gives two equal half suppose this is the imaginary axis so we get two equal halves suppose this is the imaginary axis we get two equal halves isn't it so in this case you can get five different uh, for example in case of starfish there are five different planes passing through the central axis so that's why it is called radial symmetry many lines of symmetry bilateral now see by the name bi means two two similar halves right and left side of the identical that means if we if we if an imaginary axis is passing through the body you can get two equal halves okay left and right so example insects fishes frogs birds humans these are all example of bilateral in the picture you can see bilateral you are getting two equal halves okay so this is bilateral symmetry now student this was the two points which we have covered up from the new system of classification okay 
let us quickly let us quickly answer some of the very questions few very easy questions based on today's session okay if you know the answer just unmute yourself ready see the first question see the first question according to recent study estimated number of animal species on earth is approximately dash millions options 5 6 7 does anyone know the answer yes if you know the answer unmute yourself 5 no not 5 anyone else two options are remaining now 6 and 7 how many i just while uh, explaining i said how many million of species are there no one 6 seven okay remember 7 million of 7 million of animal species is estimated okay depending upon the presence of notochord animal kingdom is divided into dash groups 2 5 yes students anyone what are the two what are the groups see notochord how many groups are there voice is not coming no one two yes very good the correct answer is two okay now see the third question what is notochord already i gave the answer so what is the notochord it is a long it is rod. a long rod like supporting structure present on tarsal side of animal body yes okay so that is the definition of notochord now this one name the 10 phylums of non chordates do you remember the names of 10 phylums at least few names okay 10 phylums as you have studied today only it might be difficult for you to remember let me give the names the names are protozoa i want someone to read can anyone read yes students can anyone read the answer shall i read it myself students you are raising your hands and mute yourself okay let me read it the names of the no, 10 point ha uh, yes mam protozoa porifera colanderata or Tanaindarata, Platyhelminthus, Ashyhelminthus, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichord. Yes, see, Protozoa, Porifera, Cilentarata, or Nidaria. Okay, Platyhelminthus, yes. Ascalminthus, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Hemichordata. Now, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. students if you are having doubts please ask the questions otherwise lower your hands <clears throat> no doubts shall i end the no. lecture yes yes ma'am
thank you ma'am okay thank you very much thank you ma'am it was so nice students you must have understood the pictorial explanation of uh, the chapter topic which has been given by the teacher it was very nice ma'am thank you very much thank you ma'am